as the body of Christ, we are called to follow wherever God leads. And as such, we affirm that when we were baptized in the name of Christ Jesus, we were united with him for all time. For Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And so we gather on days like today to remember and to give thanks to God. We do this through our prayers, through our music, our worship, but also simply through our presence. And so I encourage you to use this time to remember and to give thanks and to worship God as we consider the blessing we have known in the person of Gordon Rice. Please join me now as we are called to worship. We gather today to worship God and to celebrate the life of Gordon Leon Rice, to affirm with praise and thanksgiving the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. We gather to acknowledge God as our dwelling place and as our sure comfort, to come together and witness to our faith as we celebrate the resurrection. May God's grace and peace be with us during this time. Confident in God's grace, let us join in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you. For the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us, whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we thank you for our brother in Christ, Gordon, whom you have now received into your presence. Holy God, you see us as we are, and you know our inmost thoughts. We confess that we are unworthy of your gracious care. We forget that all life comes from you and that to you all life returns. We admit that we have not always sought or done your will. We have not lived as your grateful children nor loved as Christ loved us. But we do know that apart from you, we are nothing. Only your grace can sustain us. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us, heal us, and make us whole. Set us free from our sin and restore to us the joy of your salvation, now and in your coming kingdom. Hear now, O Lord, what is on our hearts as we silently lift our prayers to you. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. Behold, a new life has begun. Friends, know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen.
before the scriptures are read, let us pray. Eternal God, source of all true wisdom, calm the troubled waters of our hearts and still all other voices but your own, that we may hear and obey what you tell us in your word. Lift us into the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verses 28 through 32. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son, I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend, to, I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. Amen. Like many other Presbyterians, I love the Book of Romans. I'm not sure what drew me to it initially, whether it came from hearing a sermon preached or just in my own searching, but it has consistently been where I land. When I am going through some of my most difficult times, I have read through it on my own a few times over the years. And in doing so, have found some of my favorite verses, which I am here to read. Romans 8, 31, 35, and 37 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that Gordon Rice is the first person I have ever known that has had signature Bible verses. And I think you know what I mean. If Even if your only interaction with Gordon was completely outside the life of the church, I am willing to bet that he was somehow able to slide some of the imagery of Matthew 25 into the conversation. We know that Gordon identified with the goats, those blind to the stranger in need of welcome, those unaffected by the needs of the hungry. On more than one occasion, Gordon shared with me that there was a time in his life when he was what he described as being self-absorbed, blind to Christ's call to serve others first. Of course, that is never, uh, that was never the Gordon that I knew. The only Gordon Rice that I ever knew was a sheep in God's own flock, and at most times, He was also a shepherd, serving the people of God with grace and gratitude. He recognized that at his worst, he was a sinner in need of God's redeeming grace. But at his best, he was one of the everyday saints of the church. Gordon Leon Rice was born in Hugo, Oklahoma on November 22, 1930, to Hazel and Leon Rice, where he was brother to his sister Adele. His family moved to Ardmore, Oklahoma, while Gordon was in elementary school. And there in Ardmore, Gordon's life was full of many adventures on Lake Murray. Gordon attended East Central University for two years before joining the U.S. Navy in 1950. He was assigned to the USS Hickox, a naval destroyer in the Atlantic Fleet for four years during the Korean War. I loved it when Gordon would tell about his experience in the Navy. It was almost like he was telling the story of some other person. He would describe the language that the sailors would use. He would paint a picture of the hubris typical of uniformed sailors at sea. And then he would almost inevitably describe that time in his life as living unaware, as a goat. I'm not sure when exactly Gordon encountered the words of Christ in Matthew 25, but I do know that they had an incredible impact on his life. Lord, when was it that you, when was it that uh, we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? These are words that Gordon made his own. These questions became a mirror for him to examine his own life. And then, of course, there is Christ's admonition, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. That stuck with Gordon. And I don't think I can recall a Sunday school class or a meeting of the sometimers or discussion about mission or conversation about how our congregation could better engage the community that Gordon attended that didn't have at least some slight mention of those verses. There was a time or two where I didn't think he was going to get them in. And then there at the end or in a quick conversation, Immediately after the meeting, he would do it. 
I suspect that Gordon spent most of his adult life with those verses very close to his heart. And it showed. After leaving the Navy, Gordon attended Texas A&M University, where he majored in mechanical engineering and received his Bachelor of Science degree in 1958. Gordon married Betty Marshall on September 2nd, 1956, and they soon had David Marshall and Mary Ann. Living in Dallas and working at Lone Star Gas, Gordon became active in professional engineering societies where he served as president of ASME two times. He was their engineer of the year in 1985. He also worked for Texas Utilities in many capacities and retired in 1993, but then spent several years teaching. I love looking at the old pictures of Gordon, wedding pictures, pictures of him just being a good dad and grandfather, goofy pictures, pictures of his travels with friends and family, and folks from the church. It is clear that Gordon was passionate about many things, but his family was certainly at the top of that list. He loved spending time working on cars with David, and he shared morning jogs with Mary Ann. When his grandchildren, Sarah Michelle and Adam, arrived, he loved reading books to them, and he made sure to spend quality time with each of them. Gordon was really good about spending quality time with the people that he loved. It was important for him to be there. I love the story about Gordon becoming scuba certified so that he could be Mary Ann's dive buddy on a Christmas cruise shortly after Mary Ann's husband had died. Gordon was certainly the kind of guy that you could depend on to always show up. We know that he loved his church and he served his congregation faithfully as a ruling elder and as a Sunday school teacher and as part of the Sometimers group that takes care of all of the facilities. Whenever I would see the Sometimers here at the church, I would go into the library and say hello to them, and Gordon was always quick to offer me a cup of coffee, even years after he discovered that I don't drink coffee. He was always hospitable. He'd go out of his way to be hospitable. But it was more than that. Gordon really cared about people. It didn't matter if you were young or old, Gordon would find some way to connect whether it was teaching the youth of the church magic tricks or just sharing a pew. He has left his mark on many here. I also love how Gordon was an advocate for women in leadership. He would recount how years ago the congregation voted to have women elders, and he was against that decision for a brief time, but then he later came to think of that change in the life of the church as one of the smartest things this congregation ever did. Here more recently, Gordon served on the Associate Pastor Nominating Committee, and he was proud to be part of the group that brought Pastor Rosie here to FPC Richardson. Here at church, Gordon found a church family and lifelong friends. He was always up for a good discussion, often in a Sunday school class, but also out on the golf course. That would work just as well. Gordon loved reading books about naval military history. He enjoyed road trips to national parks and cruises that took him to places of historical significance. He loved having large family gatherings where he could invite neighbors and friends, especially when he could invite them to his home for Thanksgiving. Perhaps that was because he had so much to be thankful for. Without a doubt, Gordon knew who he belonged to, and he knew that wherever he went, whatever the circumstances, God would be there for him. That was apparent in the way that Gordon lived. Gordon lived his life confident that there is no place we can go to escape God's love. 
Betty shared a little poem that Gordon had taped to his bathroom mirror, words that expressed Gordon's faith, his sense of mortality, and his trust in God. They say, do not grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and I left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that place at the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things I too will miss. But not burdened with times of sorrow, I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wanted me now, he set me free. Friends, I think it is important today, as we celebrate Gordon's life, that we give thanks to God for the gift, our brother in Christ. As we remember Gordon, let us remember all that he loved, because that love, that just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me kind of love, is his legacy, and it lives on in you. Gordon has left us with a lifelong testimony about the important things in life. Can anything separate us from the love of God? As people who wrestle with those questions about whether or not we are ultimately sheep or goats, we still say, certainly not. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And while we grieve our loss, and while we miss our friend, our uncle, our grandfather, our father, a husband, we will not grieve as those who have no hope, because we too know that the God who loves us, who reaches out to us, who remains connected to us, and who shepherds us, is the same one who has already paid the price for our sins won the victory over death, and promised us that we will live in a future where every tear will be wiped away. That is Gordon's promise to us. It is Christ's promise to us as well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite Adam forward to say a few words. Uh, thank you, David, for your words. You said there, I think that uh, what I've written here very greatly reflects what's already been said. Um, Grandpa, Dad, Gordon, Mr. Rice, Great Gordo. I think we all had a different name for him, but we all knew the same man. He was a leader and a teacher, one of the most genuine people you will ever meet. Um, I, I asked him when I was little about his leg tattoo. And he'd always give me the same answer about how he had gotten it when he was in the Navy, but that he was glad because it was a good reminder of how stupid he was. And uh, you can see my arms, you know that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, most of us know that Grandpa was a storyteller, but I didn't realize until later in life that the story secretly held life lessons that benefit me to this day. He was a people person, never afraid to approach anyone and strike up conversation. He always saw the good in people. His ability to connect with others was a gift, and he never wasted it for a second. He taught me to never judge a book by its cover, and that sometimes we need to put ourselves in the shoes of our fellows. He taught me how to walk through fear, how to find the good in every situation, and how to persevere through adversity. He was always there for me, every football game, school event, or even if I was just homesick. And although this time hasn't been easy to walk through, I have found some solace and gratitude. He had done his job, and God decided it was time to take him home. And so he may not be with us physically, but the memories and the stories 
will always be near to my heart. And I know that he's always still there watching over me. Hello there. This is Steve Marshall. And I want to spend some time talking a little bit about my favorite all-time uncle, Uncle Gordon. Now, Uncle Gordon served as the father figure that I never knew or had. Growing up without a dad, uh, I missed those experiences. And when I came to the United States, Gordon took me under his wing. And from the very first day that I stepped off of that Greyhound bus in downtown Dallas, wearing those bright yellow short shorts and a zipper earring, Gordon knew that he had his work cut out for him. All he said was, he drew a deep sigh, opened the car door and said, well, they both have to go and closed the door. That was the last time I think we ever discussed the matter. But Gordon had a way of, of giving advice and sage wisdom that left you feeling somewhat confused. Was that just a compliment or was he really stating an opinion? Nevertheless, they were from a heart full of love and care. And Uncle Gordon was significantly involved in developing my character as I moved here to the United States. Now both Uncle Gordon and I have a passion for Churchill, Winston Churchill. And we collect books and memorabilia, but Gordon's bar was by far the largest. And I would enjoy the times that we would sit together discussing Churchill, whether he was a believer or not, and uh, whether he was a good peacetime prime minister for England. But perhaps the one thing that stayed with me and resonated and seems to sum up Uncle Gordon's dry wit and sense of humor was the exchange between Lady Astor and Churchill. Lady Astor said, Sir, if you were my husband, I would poison your tea. To which, of course, Churchill responded, Madam, if I were your husband, I would gladly drink it. I can still hear and see Uncle Gordon in the background just chuckling as he told me that quote. Well, Uncle Gordon, you will be missed. And while the pain and grief will still be with us, it is softened by the fact of knowing that you are in heaven surrounded by people who love you and care for you. Who knows, you may even have cornered Winston by now and are sitting down discussing his life over a cup of hot tea. Uncle Gordon, thank you for being an example of a godly man, a godly father and a godly husband. You will be missed. Gordon and Betty's daughter, Mary Ann, wrote a letter for today's service, and so I'd like to share her words with you now. For those of you who know David and me, you know what a special relationship we had with our dad. Great Gordo was truly one of a kind, and he created a lot of special memories with us. There was no question that his family was his priority. And so some of the things we remember fondly are making a haunted house in our garage with David, where they dressed as Frankenstein and Frankenstein Jr. Dad dressing up like Aquila for David's Cub Scout troop. Cranking homemade ice cream in the driveway. Playing ping pong with everyone in our neighborhood. Ensuring that we arrived at the church in time for coffee with friends building me a balance beam in our backyard, coaching David's SVAA football and basketball teams, attending all of my track meets and dance recitals, driving me to track practice every night during summer track season, and when preparing for the turkey trot as a father-daughter team, he would get us up at 6 a.m. to train taking us on vacations to Port Aransas and Big Bend State Park, 
restoring old cars with David, one of which, when sold, provided the money for David's Aggie ring, teaching me to change the oil in my car and repair my fender when I wrecked it, and getting scuba certified to be my dive buddy at the age of 67. Growing up, Dad demonstrated how to show love and affection through actions. When a song would come on the radio, he would reach for Mom's hand, and they would dance around the kitchen. At times, you would see him holding her hand or pulling her to sit on his lap. Dad found the positive in any situation. He never met a stranger, and he always had a story to tell over and over and over. He adored his grandchildren. He was tough on us when necessary and gave us grace when we needed it the most. We love and miss you, Dad, and we will take good care of Mom for you. Is it I, Lord, I have 
let us affirm our faith in the Lord by remembering the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, he opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Especially on this day, we thank you for your faithful servant, Gordon, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the ways he shared your love with family, friends, and strangers, connecting us with one another and then pointing us towards you. For the story of his life and the stories that he shared with us. For the servant's heart that you put within him. Creator God, we praise you for the grace that you gave Gordon, that kindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you faithfully. Holy God, we thank you that for him death is past and pain has ended. And we are confident that he has now entered the joy you have prepared. So hear us now as we pray together the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Gordon Leon Rice. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.